Hello everyone. Last week we began the story of Garrosh, talking about the history with his father. Thrall finding him an outland, taking him back as an advisor, have Garrosh lead the campaign at the Northrend. With victory over the Lich King secured, Garrosh was given Gorhal, the weapon of his father. Thrall told him that, like any weapon, it can be used for good or ill. I charge you with being the best of your father, Garrosh, with using his weapon wisely and well, for the good of your people. The cataclysm would soon be upon us. Shamans around the world sensing that something was wrong with the elements themselves, but what was caused in this upheaval, it remained a mystery. The world heaves with my torment. To figure out what was going on, the war chief decided to travel to Outland and communicate with their elements. While he was gone, someone would have to lead the horde, and Thrall decided that Garrosh was the perfect orc for the job to lead the horde on his behalf until he returns. At first, Garrosh thought that politics were not exactly his game. He understood battle and tactics and how to rally troops. But ruling their people, he'd rather have a sword in his fist than a scroll. Thrall assured him that he wouldn't enter the political battlefield without weapons. At his side would be seasoned advisors like Etric and Cairn to help him uphold the honor of the hordes. No need for glory at the moment. You just need to take care of it. Put his needs before your own, as your father did. It is my true longing to lead the horde to the best of my ability, Gera said. And so yes, a thousand times yes, my war chief. I will lead as well as I can, and I will consult with the advisors you suggest. I know what a tremendous honor you do me, and I will strive to be worthy of it. Ancestors, Thrall thought as he watched Gera stride away, chest swelled with pride and pleasure. I pray that I'm doing the right thing. This right here is a critical moment for the story of Garrosh and the Horde as a whole. As news spreads about Thrall's choice, people like Cairn could not believe their ears. Surely Thrall wasn't about to hand over leadership to this arrogant blusterer to guide them in this time. There were definitely good elements to Garrosh. Cairn could see it, and with time, those seeds would perhaps take root in Garrosh's soul. But right now, he was not fit to lead the Horde any more than Crom had been. But Thrall had made up his mind, left the Horde behind, and Cairn, he did his best to advise Garrosh. So did others, but often the Horde leadership clashed with each other, clashed with their new war chief. While Thrall had hoped that his new responsibility, that was actually tempering Garrosh and granting wisdom, instead taking on the mantle of leadership, it only encouraged Garrosh to indulge in his warlike ways. He had always believed that the Horde was being too timid. Thrall's way of paying for past crimes, trying to work with the Alliance, all of that was not what he had in mind. His gaze turned northwest to the lush forest of Ashenville. It was a land of plenty, and it was well within the Horde's reach. Most of the region belonged to the Night Elves, but they did not stop Garrosh from sending troops into the woodlands. Their assaults in turn enraged the Alliance. Tensions between the factions flared up, and open war seemed inevitable. Some of the Horde members welcomed these bold and aggressive maneuvers. But Cairn did not. The Elder Thorin did everything he could to reason with the acting war chief and prevent bloodshed. In Cairn's eyes, Garrosh was leading the Horde down a dangerous path, one that would inevitably destroy it. The war chief did not listen to his wisdom. And so Cairn spoke the only language the orc would understand. He challenged Garrosh to Makora. Garrosh, you are not fit to rule the Horde. Before a crowd of onlookers, the Tarn and the orc fought for the future of the Horde itself. On one side stood the promise of a peaceful future, on the other the promise of blood and conquest. It was blood and conquest that won that day, but not because Garrosh was the better fighter. Despite their age difference, Cairn's knowledge and expertise outplay Garrosh at every turn, playing into his bloodlust, his hot-headedness. The old bull stood his ground and might have won that day, was it not for Magatha Grim Totem? Part of the ritual for this Makura was to have a shaman bless their weapons. Seeing how Magatha had always wanted to take Thunderbluff away from Cairn, she saw this as the perfect opportunity and coated Gorhal without Garrosh's knowledge, coated the blade with poison. One strike, a mere flesh wound, that was all it took. Cairn blinked, his vision was blurring, 
Had he gotten dust or sweat or blood in his eyes? He took a precious second to wipe the back of his hand across his eyes, but it aided nothing. His hand shook as he lowered it, and his legs, they felt weak. Stunned, he stared at Garrosh. The orc was sweating profusely and breathing hard. As Karen watched, Garrosh gripped the axe and met Karen's gaze. Karen clutched his own weapon, it weaved in his hands. It felt so strangely heavy. And then he knew exactly what had happened to him. And so I, who have lived my whole life with honor, die betrayed. <laughs> Having Garrosh do her dirty work, it allowed Magatha to seize Thunderbluff and seize control. But her victory was not absolute, and it didn't last for very long. Karen's son, Bane Bloodhoof, he found aid in Fadamor, financial support from Jaina Proudmoore to retake a city. Magatha's betrayal, her use of Garrosh, it was whispered and rumored, and the war chief wasn't exactly happy. So it was that when she asked for his aid, it was denied with a letter, which sets. Onto Elder Crone, Magatha of the Grim Totem, acting war chief of the Horde, Garrosh Hellscream, sends his most sincere wishes for a slow and painful death. It has come to my attention that you have deprived me of a rightful kill. Karen Bloodhoof was a hero of the Horde and an honorable member of a usually honorable race. It is with disgust and anger that I discover you have caused me to bring about his death through accidental treachery. Such tactics may work well for your renegade, honorless tribe and alliance scum, but I despise them. It was my wish to fight Cairn fairly and win or lose by my own skill or lack of it. No, I shall never know, and the cry of traitor will dog my steps until such a time as I can sport your head on a pike and point to you as the real traitor. So, no. I will not be sending any true-hearted orcs to fight alongside your treacherous, belly-crawling tribe. Your victory, or your defeat, is in the hands of your Earth Mother now. Either way, I look forward to hearing of your demise. You are on your own, Magatha, as friendless and disliked as you have ever been. Perhaps more. Enjoy your loneliness. And with that, Garrosh washed his hands of her fall treachery and Bane took back the city. Following his father's wisdom, he decided not to execute her. Exile would be Magatha's fate and for those that remained at her side. This, the young Tarn believed, was the best way to honor his father's wishes. To put the needs of their people before his own desire for vengeance. This mindset, it also helped him to get past the Makora between Garrosh and Karen. He held no massive love for Hellscream. But for the sake of his people, and for the sake of the hordes, he gripped his war chief's hands and pledged the Tarn's loyalty once more. Garrosh! Karen was my brother! For all's decision to make Garrosh the acting war chief, it had caused him the life of one of his closest friends and allies. He'd been wrong to put his faith in Garrosh, and he blamed himself for all that had come to pass. But Argoel had learned much about what was to come was now on a journey of saving the entire world, so he couldn't exactly come back as war chief, and Garrosh was left in charge. Under his leadership, the Horde's aggression accelerated, which actually made a whole bunch of people happy. It was a change from Thrall's leadership, without a doubt, but his new war chief quickly became a fan favorite. His war campaign, it took the Horde into Ashenvale, these lands of plenty, where Garrosh's brutal tactics, like deploying the Magnetar taken from Northrend, forced to fight for them because they held the children hostage, it almost secured their victory. Just a bit unlucky that around this time, Varian Rin was dealing with his inner turmoil, where before, he and Garrosh were quite similar. Now he was actively working on reining in that aggression that he had inside. Gang Greymane and the Gilnean Worgen, they wanted to rejoin the Alliance. They guided the King of Stormwind through his own ritual, which ended with Varian becoming the champion of the wild god Goldrin, leading the Worgen forces to aid the Night Elves in Ashenvale. Once more, Varian and Garrosh clash blades, the king disarming and wounding the warchief. Having a demigod on your side, it helps quite a bit, and the horde was forced to retreat, literally pulling Garrosh off the battlefields. No matter. One battle lost, it did not mean the end of the war. 
Garrosh pushed forward with their campaign, assaulting more territories, while also dealing with his fellow leaders and commanders amongst the hordes. The new war chief, he had vision and ambitions for his faction, all the while remembering the lessons of the past. There's no combats, but honorable combats. So when the news reached him that Overlord Kromgar had ended their campaign in the Stone Teller Mountains by bombing Taldra Grove, the war chief decided to pay them a little visit. <laughs> Look upon the world, Cliffwalker, and see the might of the Horde! What have you done, Kromgar? War Chief! I, I was carrying out your command! My command? Was my command to murder innocents, Kromgar? War Chief! <coughs> Sir! I... Am I a murderer, Kromgar? No! War Chief! Then I ask you again, what have you done? I sent you into Stone Talon Mountains with an army. Your orders were to secure this land for the Horde. Instead, you laid waste to the land, murdered innocents, children even. I spent a very long time in Northrend, Kromgar. I learned much about the Horde in that time. While there, a wise old war hero told me something that I would carry with me forever. Honor, Kromgar. No matter how dire the battle, never forsake it. Overlord Kromgar, you have disgraced the Horde! You have brought shame to us as a people! By my right as War Chief, I hereby relieve you of duty! You are dismissed! And you... Wait, War Chief, please. This is the hero responsible for uncovering this corruption. This one tried to stop Kromgar. Have mercy, War Chief. Mercy? Your wife and child were murdered. Your kin wiped out. Your home burned to the ground. Mercy. Chieftain, on this day, I learn from you. One of the moments that made people cheer for Garrosh. There's another in the Twilight Highlands that we'll get to in just a moment. Before that's upholding honor amongst the Hordes, it proved difficult with the other races, like the Forsaken and Sylvanas Windrunner, who had taken over the battle at Gilneas. Honor meant very little to Sylvanas. She is more about getting results. Despite a war chief banning the use of their plague, she used it anyways, and when she showed off the new powers granted to her by the Valkyr, Garrosh wasn't impressed. Why have you called for me? And more importantly, what are those scourge fiends doing here? War Chief, so glad you could make it. With the death of the Lich King, many of the more intelligent scourge became... unemployed. Those fiends, as you so delicately put it, are called Valkyr. They are under my command now. And they are part of the reason that I asked to see you. Get on with it, Sylvanas! Very well, War Chief. I have solved the plight of the Forsaken. As a race, we Forsaken are unable to procreate. With the aid of the Valkyr, we are now able to take the corpses of the Fallen and create new Forsaken. Agatha, show the War Chief!
What you have done here, Sylvanas, it goes against the laws of nature. Disgusting is the only word I have to describe it. Warchief, without these new Forsaken, my people would die out. Our hold upon Gilneas and Northern Lordaeron would crumble. Have you given any thought to what this means, Sylvanas? What difference is there between you and the Lich King now? Isn't it obvious, Warchief? I serve the Horde. Watch your clever mouth, bitch! Chromosh, you stay behind and make sure the Banshee Queen is well guarded. In Orgrimmar, Garrosh had decided to evict the majority of the non-orc races from the center. Believing only the orcs possessed the strength to truly defend their city, the advisors left behind by Fro, they were more and more realizing that they were talking to a wall. The discussion between Volton and Garrosh, it pushed the Darkspear out of the city and nearly out of the hordes. Don't talk back to me, troll. You know who was left in charge here. Haven't you stopped to ask yourself why Thrall chose me instead of you? There be no question why, Garrosh. He gave you the title because you be Grom's son. And because the people be wanting a war hero. I think you be more like your father than you thought. Even without the demon blood. You are lucky that I don't got you right here, Welp. You are foolish to think you can speak to your war chief in such ways. You be no war chief of mine. You not earn my respect, and I'll not be seeing the horde destroyed by your foolish thirst for war. And what exactly do you think you're going to do about it? Your threats are hollow. Go slink away with the rest of your kind to the slums. I will endure your filth in my throne room no longer! I know exactly what I'll be doing about it, son, a hell scream. I'll watch and wait as your people slowly become aware of your ineptitude. I'll laugh as they grow to despise you, as I do. And when that time comes, that your failure is complete and your power is meaningless, I will be there to end your rule, swiftly and silently. You will spend your reign glancing over your shoulder and fearing the shadows. For when the time comes and your blood be slowly draining out, you will know exactly who fired the arrow that pierced your black heart. You have sealed your fate, troll. And you yours, war chief. Some left, while others joined, like the goblins with their leader Gallywigs, or the Shatterspear trolls recruited to aid with their campaign in Darkshore. The cataclysm carried on with not just the Alliance and the Horde fighting each other. There was also the bigger threats of Deathwing and the old gods' plans for the world, which required some attention as well. Both sides ventured into the Twilight Highlands to take care of the Twilight Hammer cult. Fleets of airships blotted out the sun, laden with war machines and soldiers. But our entry into the Highlands, it wasn't just smooth sailing. Fellow warriors of the Horde, hear me now! Ahead hides our foe, worshippers of chaos who seek to remake the world. A new world is coming, friends, but it is not the world of their design. Together, we will crush the Twilight's hammer, raise their stronghold, salt the earth, and burn the bodies! All will tremble at our might! Then we will stand astride this world as its masters! United in our conviction, unrivaled in strength, beholden to no one! Today, we will remake the world! Our world! Coming up on the For Twilight the Highlands, Horde! Captain! Captain, sir! Alliance Naval Fleet sighted off the port bow! The Alliance steams in close formation without escort! Air Guard, attack! Strafe them now while what? they cannot what? maneuver! What do you think he's doing? <laughs> the carriers are unprotected! What kind of madman orders away his close air support? 
A winner! They're after the war chief! Get off my ship! The war chief Zeppelin is in flames! It's going down! Despite a rocky start, we do make landfall and come in contact with the Dragomar clan. They were actually part of the very first horde. Quite a long story involving the enslavement of Alexstrasza, the Red Dragon aspects, and their flights. These days, the Dragomars are led by the fell orc Morgor, but a bit of persuasion on our part, a bit of murder to get rid of this corrupted orc, he replaces him with Zela. Wherever the horde takes us, we will keep our heads high and our blood pure. God rends, Morgor! A new Dragonmar dawns this day! The war chief! He's alive! He was rescued off the coast! Come outside quickly! The town is ours! Ah, there she is! The battle maiden of the Dragonmar! Let me see your face! Hell scream! I am Zayla of the Dragon Maw. Your people have freed mine from tyranny. We are your instrument. The strength of the Dragon Maw is yours to command. For the Horde! Blood and honor, hero. The Horde welcomes you. Your people will be put to the test as we obliterate Twilight's hammer and lay claim to this distant shore. And so they did. Their adventures together, forming a close bond between Garrosh and Zela. If they ever wanted to add a secret child of Garrosh to the story, Zela would be our best bet. That's never been stated though. In this moment, the Twilight's Hammer in the area, they were defeated. And eventually Goel and the Aspects and the world of Azeroth, they were able to stop Deathwing and the Old God's plans. You are Azeroth's true guardians, and the future of this world is in your hands. For the dawning of the Age of Mortals has begun. The damage inflicted to the world, it meant that Goel stayed with the Earthen Ring to heal Azeroth. That also meant that Garrosh stayed on as Warchief of the Hordes, and this dawn of the Age of Mortals it was his time to push forward with their plans of dominance and conquest. The Horde leaders were gathered, as Garrus explained his plans of taking out Fedamor, home to Jaina Proudmoor, the one that Thrall had worked so hard with to establish peace. It had now become a prime target for the war chief to take out. Not all of them agreed with Garrus's choice. Not all thought that this was a good idea for the Hordes. But all the same, the Horde, they rallied his forces at the war chief's command. Now going off to Jaina, it was quite a dilemma for Bane. She had helped him to reclaim his city after all. She had been there for him when he had no idea who he could trust. But at the same time, he wasn't going to abandon his duty to the Hordes. The Tauren would march with them. As a middle ground, he decided that at the very least, Jaina should be caught unaware. In secret, a messenger was sent to warn her of the coming attack, which gave Fedamore the chance to evacuate its civilians and call in aid from the Alliance. Unbeknownst to Bane was that this played right into Garrus's hands. Despite their bitching and moaning about making the troops hold back and wait, not immediately charging toward Fedamore, the war chief had a plan. He had waited for as many of the Alliance forces to be gathered in one place so he could unleash his true weapon. Fedamore was not going to be conquered with brute force. It would be completely annihilated with the focusing Iris, stolen earlier from the blue dragon flight. Turned into a bomb, courtesy of the Blood Elves, dropped over the city by the goblins, only Ronin's brave sacrifice had saved Jaina's life and prevented the Blast from doing so much more damage. Bane was a warrior. His eyes had seen almost more than he could bear of the horrors of war. But this, the mana bomb so thoughtfully provided by the Blood Elves, who stood cheering with other Horde members who somehow felt that what Garrosh had wrought was a good thing, had exploded over the entire city and had not just harmed its citizens and buildings, but crushed them utterly. Tears ran down his muzzle, and he made no effort to wipe them away. He stood surrounded by throngs of cheering Hordes, but as he looked around, he saw, illuminated by the ghostly arcing glow, faces the war's own expression of shock and revulsion. What had happened to the war chief, who had once said, Honor, Kromgar. No matter how dire the battle, never 
forsake it. Here we would see a massive shift in Garrus' character. The whole conquer and conquest, that was nothing new. I don't think that there are many out there that have issue with Fatimore being a target to take out. Rather, it's the methods used by the war chief that made people wonder what the hell was going on. For one expansion earlier, he had thrown Overlord Krumgar off a cliff for using a bomb in the Stone Teller Mountains. Here he was deploying the same tactics, and the bomb was just part of it. There was also dark shamanism, forcing the elements to obey them right after the cataclysm. There were Kraken summoned from the depths. No longer did honor dictate his choices, and it was such a difference that back then some actually wondered if there was more going on. Was perhaps the Garrus that we had known replaced in the Twilight Highlands when he fell off the ship? Was his new ally the extremely loyal and enforcing Blackrock Orc Melkorok? Was that kill Jaden in disguise, mirroring the manipulation of the orcs of old? None of that would come into play. Blizzard has clearly said that it was Garrosh who made these decisions. No old god influence or legion manipulation. The conflicts with the advisors left behind and slowly filling up his inner circle with those in line with his vision for the future. All of that became the path that they laid out for Hellscream, with the bombing of Fedamore just being the beginning. The victory earned at Fedamore was cause for celebration in Orgrimmar, while whispers started to rise up within the faction. People like Bane and Vol'jin and others, they did not agree with what the war chief had done. Speaking out or taking action at this point in time was not really an option. People merely visiting an inn and whispering their discontent. They found themselves under assault and scrutiny by Melkrock and his forces. Hellscream's eyes are always upon them. So they laid low and remained loyal to the hordes, while Jaina's survival... That meant that she was able to return to Fadamor and witness the carnage. She looked for survivors, but she found none. The peacekeeper, the diplomat that she used to be, that was murdered by Hellscream. Now there was rage that took hold of her heart. And while there were no survivors to be found, she did encounter a group of orcs poking around the debris, laughing to each other, looting of the dead. No one can protect you. Kill the proud moor wench. And bring me that Your bomb! Your people are despicable cowards, orc! You're nothing more than rabid dogs, and you will be put down! Brave words, mage! I'll spit in your face when you beg for mercy! You spit on mercy? Then you will have none! You want carnage? Garrosh will get more blood than he ever bargained for! Now the focusing iris was in her possession. And she planned to use his power to create a massive tidal wave and drown out all those in Orgrimmar. Goel and the Blue Dragon Caligos, they were able to change her mind, convince her to not become another Arthas. Instead, she decided to use the waters gathered to help the assembled Alliance fleets. They were fighting against Kraken, who were dealing massive damage to the ships. But the war chief did not just send the creatures of the deep to do his fighting. He too, Gorhal in hand, jumped into the fray. Once more clashing blades with Varian. Three times they had done this dance now. Garrosh wanted to end it, but their battle was interrupted by a Kraken, and Jaina's tidal wave secured victory here for the Alliance. But War Chief Garrosh was far from done though. In his mind, he was simply thinking too small. It was no longer just about taking over Kalimdor. They had to crush the Alliance utterly, wiping their filth of the face of Azeroth. More ships, more weapons, more elementals and beasts and demons obeying their commands. Garrosh Hellscream, said Bane calmly. I ride now for Mulgor with my braves. There are far fewer of them than when I rode out to answer the call of the war chief of the Hordes. My loyalty to the Horde is deep, and you cannot gainsay me on that. But know this, I fight for the true Hordes. Not one that utilizes methods both unnecessary and shameful. There must never be another Fedamor. Not if you wish the aid of Bane Bloodhoof. Garrosh stared at Bane with narrowed eyes and a slight smirk that Bane could not interpret. Duly noted, he said, as he gathered up the reins of his Kodo. Bane glanced at Vol'jin. The troll looked at him sadly and gave a nearly imperceptible shake of his head. Bane nodded slightly. He understood Vol'jin's reasoning. It was the same as Bane's own. Vol'jin needed to protect his people from the wrath of an offended Garrosh. A world war. As Bane headed west, toward home and the serenity of the rolling plains of his beloved Mulgor, he could not decide if Garrosh was mad with power or simply mad.
any answer to that question, and so much more, we're going to save for next week. And we'll finish up the story of Garrosh Hellscream. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time, see ya!